Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today, we have a lot of big things going on. I recently went fishing in the Kenai River on the Kenai Peninsula, and I caught some fresh sockeye salmon. And let me tell you, my brother goes there every year, and I don't normally get to go there. But if you can see the red color on this, let me take scrape off the marinade a little bit. It's just beautiful, and it's meaty and a little bit stronger in flavor. It's great to grill, bake, or anything. I uh, caught my first two and we filleted them up and cooked them on the grill that evening and it was something just awesome. Um, what we're gonna serve with the salmon today is roasted red potatoes and asparagus with garlic. And it is from our fish god up there on the Kenai River, Mr. Jim Belush, um, um, Belushi, and we are going to cut these up first because they're going to take the longest time to cook. So we're going to cut them in quarters. The main thing with the red potatoes is you really want them to be the same size because if the potatoes aren't the same size, which is a general rule, they're not going to all cook the same. Some of them are going to be done and some of them are going to be still crispy. When you're picking out your potatoes in the store, if you could try to see the consistency of the size, that always helps out. And if not, then, you know, cut them down a little bit more. But we're gonna start with these and we're gonna put a simple seasoning on them, which is either zesty Italian seasoning <clears throat> or something along those lines. And, you know, probably like two tablespoons. And I always like to put a little bit of the ranch seasoning mix and I use these for a lot of things because it has a lot of uh, like a shortcut to different things in here that give it a you know a rounder flavor without adding too much salt so we're going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there and then kind of a generous amount of olive oil because you do want it to you know get crispy and be delicious and then we're going to take this and give it a nice shake and get all the seasonings mixed up. I usually get air in the bag and then just mix it around like that. That helps to get it a little bit more consistent than just laying it flat like that. There we go. And then dump it in there. Make sure you get all the seasoning out that you can. And then I just take the bag and you want it to be not, you don't want them touching because we're gonna to try to get these crispy, like crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. So just separate them all like that. And they're gonna cook for about 25 minutes or so, depending on how long it takes you to get your salmon and stuff together. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these in there. And if you wanted to add onions to this or colored peppers or really anything, and roast them all, you know, as far as getting more vegetables, you can do that. But we're gonna do a, a lemon dill sauce and the salmon. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in here on the top because we're gonna put the salmon below it. It cooks better that way. All right, now we're gonna do the salmon. And I have taken the salmon and put it in a herb and garlic uh, marinade. You can do different marinades, but I would be careful with anything that has too much lemon in it because it will kind of like cook it, you know, like ceviche kind of. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a bed of lemons down on here because the, the salmon has skin on it. So you're basically going to eat it off of, you know, pick it out of the skin. And I didn't know that when you're filleting the salmon, the small size, the small side of it is the side that doesn't have bones on the filet. My buddy told me that in Alaska the other day when we were coming up with the menu. And I did a little research on the sockeye salmon and all of the different types of salmon and why it's different colors and stuff like that. And I didn't know this at the time, but when the salmon are spawning out of the ocean and into the fresh water, 
they absorb their scales and their diet is part of what makes the fish so red. So this part, I don't know if I have enough lemons, this part right here is the small side and it doesn't have any, oh it does, this has bones, the bigger side, okay. Well you learn something new every day. So there we go and we're going to put that right there. And then on top of this, I'm going to take just a little squeeze of lemon, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take whatever marinade I have left, put a little bit of it over top. And I, can, I marinated this for a day since last night. Uh, I wouldn't go any more, I would say two days on fish, because it's, it's a little tricky when you're, you're marinating the fish and stuff like that to, it just, I think it'll get too much flavor in there. Um, I'm going to put some pepper on here. And then when you cook salmon, you don't have to cook it to like 165 or basically over 140 something. And I would always take the big fillets and put them to the outside and take the little fillets and put them to the inside because they're never really going to be the same thickness. And that's kind of important because you see how thick this is. This is going to cook much slower than the, this one in the middle. So always on the outside of the pan, it's going to cook faster. And some of those things, because if you have overcooked salmon, it is not good at all. So, <clears throat> oh, and just a kidding, we're going to put a little bit of this on top of there. I forgot about that. This adds just a little bit of herbiness onto the top of it with the marinade. There we go. All right. Put this in the oven. And we're going to put it under the potatoes. So we're going to put a timer on that. The potatoes have been in there like six minutes, so I give it 20 and everything's going to be ready. But we're going to work on the dill sauce right now. I need the bowl. So we have two tablespoons or two ounces of sour cream. And then this is going to be kind of to taste because I've taken a couple recipes and mixed them together like I like to do. I'm going to do like an ounce or so of Dijon mustard. I'm going to do some pepper. I'm going to save all these little ends right here of the lemons. I put them to the side because there's still a lot of lemon juice in there. And everything adds up at the end of the day. Just a squeeze of lemon in there. A little bit, a ta just a touch of the red wine vinegar. Just a little bit. Some people use milk, they said, to thin this out. We're going to use the red wine vinegar just to give it a little tang. And then we're going to start with the dill. So I just bought this dill because we didn't grow any this year, but it looks really good. And then you take your dill. You don't want the sprigs. You just want these little ends, the very, very fine little ends. Some people put the, the stems in there, and I don't like that. It's kind of a little bitterish. We're going to take all this, keep going like probably two sprigs full. And I don't know if y'all have ever had dill in anything, but it's really herby. Got just a hint of lemonish in there. And you can get lemon dill or different flavored dills. And if you can find any of that, definitely use it because it would make everything taste delicious. We had a, a dill seasoning that I found up there in Alaska that I left up there and I'm upset over it, but I'm gonna try to get some sent to me and it had a hint of dill in it. We put it on the salmon, and we also used it in the butter for the crab legs, which I am going to have brought in so we can cook those, and that those were delicious. All right, so when you're chopping this, you want to get it really fine, and then you're going to add all this, which is probably like an ounce or so, over into the 
You need to get it pretty fine. You don't want a big old chunk of dill in there. And a couple of y'all have wrote in on um, my superior knife skills that aren't really that good. But the spinning thing is you just hold the, the top and you run through it kind of as close as you can to it. And go like this. And then just scrape it down. And then get it off the knife. Try not to cut yourself on the edge of the knife. And then that should do it. See how fine that is? I mean, it's like really fine. Put all that in there. And then give it a stir and let this, this, I made this now because you want it to set just for a bit because you want the dill to absorb in the vinegar and stuff. And then always taste it. See if it's good enough. <clears throat> I think it's missing, I think it needs a little bit more sour cream. It needs to be creamier. So make, do like two parts of sour cream to one part Dijon and just a little bit more lemon. And that's all, all to taste. We're going to put just a little bit of salt in there. And you want it to be the consistency to where it's not going to like fall off the fish. That's why you only put just a, a hint of vinegar in there you know like like I said some people put milk you may put heavy cream but I like to have a little bit of bite but you want this consistency right here so when you do it on the fish it's good all right so we are going to let that cook for just about 10 more minutes 15 at the most and then when we come back we're going to show you how to prepare the asparagus with the fresh garlic and the parmesan cheese and then we'll put the dish together so we'll see you in a few. Thank you. Jody's Kitchen is brought to you in part by the Harvester Performance Center. World-class entertainment year-round. Harvester Performance Center, downtown Rocky Mount. Visit harvester-music.com. Hi, I'm Rob, manager quickly. I want to take a second and talk about your car. We've all been caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life. You don't have time to spend hours at a shop for a simple oil change and tire rotation. Here at Quick Lube, we change your oil, not your schedule. We operate on a first come, first serve basis, so no appointment necessary. We also repair those squeaky brakes, put you some tires on, and do an alignment all in one shop. Serving you with two locations, 700 Liberty Street in Martinsville and 6518 Greensboro Road in Ridgeway. Hi, right, so we're good. Right, here we go, three, two, one. Hi, I'm Robbie, manager at Quick Lube. I want to take a sec. Take a sec. God we go. bless. Oh. Are you looking for great food and entertainment? Ippy's Restaurant is the place to be. We have been serving local communities since 1919. With made from scratch entrees and specialty dishes like our famous oyster Rockefeller, smoked prime rib, and hand carved filet mignon, we have a great selection of menu items that are all made to order for your everyday dining or special occasions. We also offer private rooms, catering services, and have a wonderful assortment of local bands that play in the lounge. Ippy's Restaurant and Lounge, 1760 North Main Street, Rocky Mountain. Are you tired of your car looking like this? You need to call Kevin's Collision Center. With over 35 years of auto repair service, Kevin's Collision Center can get you back to factory specs. Some insurance companies may want you to visit their drive-in claim center before having your car repaired, or you can leave your car at Kevin's Collision Center and ask the insurance company inspect the car here. We help you navigate your auto body claim with the insurance company. 
When everything is at the right place, you can't go wrong. Kevin's Collision Center, 8985, Philpot Highway, Martinsville, Virginia, 276-632-0123. everybody well welcome back to recap what we're doing today we are fixing the salmon that I caught on the Kenai River roasted red potatoes and fresh sauteed asparagus with garlic and topping it off with um, Parmesan cheese so now it the salmon has been in there for like 10 minutes or so and the potatoes in there for about 17 to 20 we're gonna pull these out and get a temperature of them Make sure they're all good. And the salmon looks beautiful. As you can tell, the color is still there that differentiates it between the other. I'll do this. At definitely done 153, 138, 140. We're on the mark. We're good. All right, sure that one's done. So now we are going to let that sit for just a minute and we're gonna come over here and prepare our asparagus. I'm gonna go ahead and grate some fresh Parmesan cheese. So what we're gonna do with the asparagus is I'm gonna get this pan really hot and we're going to cook it on a very high saute To where it's very it's still crispy we want because the salmon's nice and soft the potatoes are going to be you know a little crunchy on the outside and then creamy on the inside and we're going to go for a crispy asparagus and I got the thinnest asparagus that I could find so I would only have to cook it for a, you know just a couple sec couple minutes on each side or in the pan so I'll tan it so we're going to get the parmesan right here now I'm going to cut the asparagus down into bite-sized pieces. There we go. Put that right there. Now on the asparagus, when you're storing it in the fridge to keep it fresh, and it will last for, I've had some last for two weeks and it's still fresh. You might have to clip the ends off, kind of like they're doing it in the grocery store now. Same way with celery anything like that. So you just take it and the best way to figure out where the where it's not tough and stuff anymore is to take the asparagus and when you bend it, it bends, it'll start to break where all of the rigidness is at the end. So as you can tell my pan smokes really fast. So we're gonna need to get some olive oil in there before we burn it. <laughs> yeah, if you hadn't had an induction oven, this is the way to go. So take your asparagus and move those over. And then just in half. And we're going to throw that in the pan. Like I said, it gets hot. <laughs> and while that's going, we're going to get some garlic. Which I thought I pretty much had out here. But you know how it is when you're moving things around real fast. It gets hectic. So we're going to put a little garlic in there. Smash it down real good. Chop it up. Throw it in the pan. Get a little salt in there. Give it a nice stir. 
Things are flying out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let it cook just for a minute. And then you don't, I don't put the butter in it first because you don't want it to um, burn. And as you notice, I left the garlic a little bit large, and you can smell it, but it's, it's enough. And then right when the asparagus is almost done, because this stove is really hot, and if you're, using, if you're doing this at home, a cast iron skillet will work really well because it's real heavy. Because this induction stove will heat something up in a split second. All right, now we're going to go in here with a couple things of butter. And I always, always leave my butter out, get it softened up nice and yummy. Uh -oh. Lost it. Too much stirring. There you go. We did, when we were cooking up in Alaska, or when I said I was cooking up in Alaska, we did a bunch of onions on the grill. If you wanted to do those in tin foil, if you wanted to move this to like an outside thing you're doing, all of it works. All right, so the asparagus is done that quick. And I wanted to do that from start to finish on camera so you would know how easy it is. All right, now we're going to take our salmon, put it right here on the plate. Oh, that looks good. And then some of our potatoes. And they're, they're nice and crispy. Put them out there. And the good thing about this salmon is you can, you can kind of see where the bones are. You can feel them. And the color, I just can't get I couldn't get over the color when we were cutting them. And I'll try to get a picture in here at the end so you can see it, what it looked like when we were fishing for them. All right, we're going to take this. And then we're going to put some cheese on top of the asparagus while it's nice and hot. And you can put some on the potatoes too if you'd like. The more the merrier. And then maybe like a little garnish of dill on the fish. And then we're going to go in here with the sauce. Put it right there, right on top. And let it slowly drip off onto the fish. And remember, don't refrigerate it because you don't want it to be too cold. That's why we made it a little bit early to let it sit out. Now it's for the taste test of the salmon that I caught in the Kenai River myself. Look at that. Look at the color in that. I'm going to taste it by itself first. It's so juicy. I mean, just delicious. Try it with some of that. When you add the dill sauce, to the fish is when it brings out the dill flavor. I promise you, because I was tasting this during the commercial break, and I was like, what do you think it needs? Do you think it needs anything? But it does not need anything. So do not judge the sauce until you taste it with the fish. Let's go in here with this little asparagus. Mmm. Perfect combination of everything. Whatever you do, a couple of things that we need to, you need to make sure is do not overcook the salmon. You do not want the salmon to be over 145. If it is any salmon, you will, it will be dry. And that's one of the biggest things when I made the episode where we did the salmon in the cream sauce with the spinach. A lot of people wrote into me and told me that theirs was dry. And it, you know, in all that stuff, it doesn't, if, if you overcook it, it's never going to be, it's never going to get juicy again. Um, the potatoes, you can't mess those up. But if you want to take a variation of any of these things, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, make sure you email me at jody.jeans at gmail.com. Or you can um, send a message to the YouTube channel. But please make sure you subscribe to Jody Jeans Kitchen. And look for Chad and I... Chad and I out with BDW21. We're going to be doing some special events. 
And if you have an event that you want us to go to and, and cover, please contact Chad at BDW21 or myself at jodyjeans at gmail.com. We do want to thank you for watching the channel and for coming out to Ippies. We're going to have a lot of new specials at the restaurant and that have to do with dill sauce. Unfortunately, we don't have enough salmon from the Kenai River to serve, but we will have salmon that we're going to do the dill sauce and emulate the menu that we just did here at the restaurant. So thank you for tuning in. And once again, we do appreciate all the comments, questions, suggestions, on everything that you've been sending us. We really appreciate it. And as Ippies is celebrating its 100 year anniversary, we are doing all kinds of new things and you need to check us out on ippiesrestaurant.com. Our daily schedule is on there for bands on the weekends and is also our catering menus and everything else. So thank you so much and have a good day. Jody's Kitchen is brought to you in part by the Harvester Performance Center. World-class entertainment year-round. Harvester Performance Center, downtown Rocky Mount. Visit harvester-music.com. The reason we work so hard to get you the vehicle you need is because we know that by helping you, we help the community. Whether you're working on new construction, delivering food to families in need, or it's just your turn to carpool. However you use it, we know you'll do great things with your vehicle. Autos by Nelson. What drives us is what moves you. Um, so locally owned, we're here to build relationships. We're not just worried about selling you a new phone or the latest product or whatever that may be. We're here to build relationships, go the extra mile for our customers. Well, as you can see, we got all the Galaxy products. Um, we just launched a Galaxy S10. Um, so we have everything from iPhone to Samsung to Motorola to LG. Uh, we carry all the good stuff. So um, come in, we'll help you get in to whatever you're looking for. Um, I love building relationships with customers. Not only that, but uh, this store here personally has just a great vibe. Um, everyone here gets along great uh, between the employees and the customers. Well, uh, we're all just one big happy family. Hey guys, Chris at Eden Jewelry here. For over 35 years, Eden Jewelry has been the region's premier retailer to sell your unwanted or broken jewelry. We also buy diamonds, Rolex watches, gold and silver coins, and sterling flatware. Gold and silver prices are still very high, and our promise to you is that we pay out better than any of our competitors. Why sell your jewelry at a yard sale? Instead of practically giving it away, why not make the extra cash? Eden Jewelry, 802 Commonwealth Boulevard, Martinsville, Virginia, 276-634-0222. It's not always apparent right away, but at some point, you realize life doesn't appear as it should. Be sure you catch all of life's moments. Let the physicians at Vistar Eye Center improve your outlook with cataract surgery. Now seeing patients at our new location on Church Street in Martinsville. Trust Vistar Eye Center, where your sight is our vision. Hello, my name is Amelia Watkins. I'm a filament team leader at Drake Extrusion. I've been here since the company opened up in 95. We have a lot of job opportunities currently in the filament area. There is a lot of room for advancement because we do promote from within our company. And anyone that's looking for a job for a long term, this is the place that you want to be. My name is Brandon Goad. I've been in Drake Extrusions for 17 years now. I work on the staple side. What I like most about Drake is the work schedule. You were four on, four off. You never laid off here at Drake. And you get two weeks off for Christmas. So this is a great place to work for. My name is Jose Vasquez. I've been here for three weeks. I'm a machine operator. Great job, great teamwork. 
If you're looking for a job, this is the place to be. Hi, my name is James Hall. I first started here at Drake in 2009. The thing I liked about the job was the work schedule and our days off. The job itself was very fulfilling. After five years, I left due to personal reasons. When I felt I was able to return, I was welcomed back with open arms, like family. Now, I've been here a total of nine years. Uh, Drake offers a lot of advancement and longevity. And now I'm a trainer for our new employees. Me, myself, I like to think of myself as being a success story. We currently have openings in our manufacturing operation. Please apply at www.drakeextrusion.com. We look forward to seeing you.